Hi there, this is Ari with Epic Systems, and I'm um, just going to put together a quick video here to show how to set up the Amazon Echo Driver and identify it um, on the network. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead first and just um, add the driver to my Control 4 project. Go ahead and search for the word Echo. And I'll go ahead and add the project to my demo room. And the first thing you need to do is, of course, enter your license key to activate the driver. Uh, until the driver is activated, you can't um, really do much else. So I'll go ahead and enter my license key. Make sure the license activated successfully. And the next part is to uh, determine the IP address of your Echo. And that could be uh, one of the most tricky parts I've found. Um, but it's actually you know, fairly easy if you know what you're doing. So um, the way I like to determine the Echo's IP address is to use a tool such as um, Advanced IP Scanner. And I'll scan my network, uh, as we see I'm doing here. Uh, before I set this up, though, I would normally uh, recommend going into your router and setting a, uh, a MAC address uh, reservation for the uh, for the echo and the way you can find the echo's mac address uh, is actually in the alexa app on your mobile device or uh, if you use the browser interface at alexa.amazon.com you can go into the settings and you can um, select your echo and then down at the bottom of the screen you'll see the MAC address. And so I see that here. So good, good idea is to just configure that MAC address as a uh, reserved, reserved uh, IP in your router's configuration. That way you know what um, what the IP address will be. Uh, but regardless, it's good to run a an IP scanning tool such as Advanced IP Scanner. Uh, the other one that I often use is um, the um, Bing tool. So let me go ahead and log in and you'll see here that uh, I've run a scan using Fing. And the easiest way to identify where your Echo is is to see the, uh, the manufacturer name, Amazon Technologies. You'll see here though that I have a few different ones from Amazon. I've got a couple Echoes in my system as well as an Amazon Fire TV, uh, as well as an Echo Dot. So uh, what I can do is I can cross-reference the Echo that I'm trying to ID with, which I see here this one has a MAC address ending in 8AD7, which corresponds to the one here in my Amazon account. Um, so I know that's the right one, and therefore the IP address is... Um, let's see, let's go back to that. It is... 10.0.0.120, which is the proper IP that I had reserved on my router. So that looks right. Um, one thing to note here also is that um, if you do have multiple Echoes connected to the same Amazon account, um, for instance here, if I go back to settings, this Amazon account only has one Echo tied to it or registered under it. But if you have multiple Echoes uh, in the same Amazon account, you're going to want to use the IP address of the primary echo, which is typically the first one shown in the list here, uh, or the first one that was set up. And you're only going to want to create one instance of the echo driver in your project for each Amazon account. Uh, the only time you would add a second instance of the driver is if you were to create the echoes and register them under different Amazon accounts. Uh, in that case, each each echo will have its own set of trigger words, as opposed to being sharing the trigger words uh, with each other. So I'll go ahead and enter the IP address, and I'll go ahead and click the set button. And now the next piece is to actually test out and make sure that 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 works. Um, what I'll do is I'll add some triggers, some test triggers, and synchronize those with the uh, 
with the echo by doing a device discovery. So right now I have no triggers and I'll go ahead and start creating some triggers. Create one called living room, perhaps kitchen. Perhaps one called house. And one called um, bedroom music. Okay, so we've got four triggers created. We can see those listed in the drop-down box. The next step is to uh, test the fact that we've got the correct IP address by uh, actually doing what we call a discovery, sending the discovery. So the way I like to do this is actually using the... Um, there's two ways you can do it. The, the one is to just talk to your Echo and ask it to discover devices. Um, my preference is actually use the browser interface or the mobile app and simply go to the smart home section here and you'll see a uh, area called your devices and if you click discover devices then you can see then you can uh, trigger the discovery that way. And this can be done from anywhere. You don't even need to be um, at the physical location of the Echo if you do it this way. You only need to have access to the Amazon account that that um, Echo is registered with. So before I do that, what I'll do is I, I'm going to go over to my properties here and I'm going to turn on debug mode and set it to print. And then uh, that will allow me to see the Lua output of uh, the discovery process. Okay, now that I've done that, the next step is to go into the Echo app, select Discover Devices, and you see now I have 20 seconds to go back into my uh, driver and hit the Send Discovery button. And now I'll come back to my Lua tab, and I can see exactly what's happening. I can see which IP address is complete. and port. Your smart home devices. If your Philips bulbs were not discovered, please press the button on the bridge. And you may have heard my Echo just acknowledge that it discovered four devices, and I see that as well here. And if I go back to my uh, app, I can see these four four devices have been registered as, as Hue Lights. So that appears to have worked just fine, and um, that's really all you need to do to set up your devices. Now, if I were to go add additional um, triggers, uh, perhaps I want to have one called um, uh, Exterior Lights. Um, if I add another trigger, then I do need to go through the process again of doing a, a discovery. So I'll go and discover devices again, send the discovery, and I can see here that it's going to go through again, and we'll sh we should have a total of five triggers now that were discovered. Discovery is complete. I found five smart home devices. And, and there we go. Bulbs were not discovered. Please press the button on the bridge and rerun discovery. So the only thing to note is if you do remove devices or you remove triggers from the driver, <laughs> then we don't automatically remove them from the Echo we have to actually go ahead and choose the forget option here. So if you, if you do forget, or you can actually choose forget all devices and groups, and that will uh, essentially clear those out as far as the echo is concerned. Um, so if you do, uh, if you do want to do that, just remember that we don't actually remove those. Um, you just need to go there and forget them once you've deleted them. And to delete the, to delete the triggers, you simply uh, go here and you select, for example, house and then you hit the set button and that removes it from the list of triggers but it does not remove it from um, the echo as, far, as, as, as I just mentioned so I would just go ahead and, and choose to forget that device so that my my lists are in sync so that's pretty much uh, the setup process uh, the next step would be once you've uh, created the triggers would be to then actually uh, program each of them and uh, I'll uh, create another video just to talk about uh, programming and showing some different examples of how to program uh, the trigger. Thanks a lot.